A 25-year-old man has died of coronavirus in Lagos State. The Lagos State Ministry of Health revealed this in a tweet on Thursday morning. It revealed that the patient was in a state of severe breathlessness at the time of admission. According to the ministry, this brings the total number of people who have died of COVID-19 in the state to 20. It confirmed that 87 new cases of coronavirus were confirmed on Wednesday, raising the total figure of infections reported in the state to 947. The ministry added that a total of 187 COVID-19 patients have been discharged following the recovery of 49 more people. We are being joined now by Simon Ateba, international journalist and the publisher of Today News Africa in Washington District of Columbia, USA. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you for having me. And how are you doing this evening? Uh, doing great. It's 3 p.m. here, so uh, <laughs> it's right, not great. yet. It's still afternoon here. How would you assess how Nigerian government is handling the beat to curtail the spread of the virus? Okay, so first of all, I would say that the wasted uh, President Muhammad Buhari and his administration wasted a lot of time. Uh, when from the U.S. and looking back and seeing how they were, uh, the, the, the whole time that they wasted uh, while the crisis was ongoing in China, in Europe, in and even here in the U.S., so the first thing is that they wasted a lot of time. And the reason they wasted time is because the, there was this assumption that this disease didn't kill black people, that this disease didn't kill Africans, that Africans were immune to it. And, and so the first phase, they wasted so much time. And when the time came for them and only took action when uh, the, the crisis escalated and we already had cases in Nigeria, they already knew that there were cases in Italy. We, they already knew how severe uh, coronavirus was in the U.S. and in Italy and in other places, but they didn't take action on time. But eventually when the crisis escalated and prominent politician began to uh, became infected, we, we saw some action that they took. They, they, they imposed some lockdown, shutdown, and other measures. So the, the assessment that we make is the first thing is that they made a lot of mistakes at the beginning and then uh, tried to catch up. But right now they are making mistakes again because WHO says before you can lift lockdown and shutdown, you need to ensure that you have enough testing. You need to expand testing, contact tracing, and which is what Nigeria has not done. Nigeria has almost 200 million people, and they've done so far almost less than 12,000 tests in all. And in those tests that they've done, they have uh, more than 1,500 confirmed cases, which means that if they do enough testing, do you be able to catch, uh, do you be able to identify most pe more people who have the disease and you'll be able to treat it? So to me, um, the, my assessment would be like if I, will, I won't give them a pass mark, I will give the government maybe three over 10. Interesting. Let, let's take a look at information dissemination and management of information. How transparent would you say the Nigerian government has been about COVID-19? Okay, so uh, first of all, I, I feel like everything was concentrated in Lagos. And that's why we had issues in Kanu, where people were not really aware. We have cases in people in Katsina State, in some northern state, where some people didn't really know, they were not really carried along. Uh, and, and they were making the same mistakes that happened in DRC during the Ebola crisis. When there's a major outbreak, the first thing you need to do, you need to make sure that you have an information dissemination system across board. People in villages, people in rural areas, in town, in cities, in different platforms, online platform, radio, TV. And I had the impression that they didn't really do it they didn't even carry the journalists along. It took them time for them to have a website where they can disseminate information. Even now, they didn't have anything like a virus tracker system where everyone can go and know um, where um, 
and get the latest information about the virus. They didn't have, uh, there were many things missing. First, they didn't carry people along, didn't well, carry well, even well, journalists have, along, have and have didn't SBC, have, yeah, it, it took though. time for them to have some platform to be able to uh, disseminate the right information to the right people. COVID-19, obviously, a global pandemic and the issue of testing calls for concern across the globe. What is the situation like in the U.S. as well? Okay, so uh, the U.S. has conducted almost 5 million tests, but the U.S. is a big country. It has almost 320, 330 million people. And right now you have more than 64,000 people who have died from COVID-19. And you have more than a million people who have tested positive. And so the situation is really bad here. Yesterday, we had more than 2,000 people who died. And the day before yesterday, we still have more than 2,500 people died. In the past 48 hours, we've had 5,000, close to 5,000 people who have died from COVID-19. And, and so it's bad. And, is, uh, and the same thing uh, that happened now, that is happening now, is what happened 100 years ago in 1918. After people spent some months at home, everyone wanted to go out, wanted to go out. And when they went out, the second wave came and killed almost 750,000 people. And so my message to people in Nigeria is, first of all, this thing is real. It's a pandemic. It means it doesn't have vaccine and it doesn't have treatment. And it means that it affects everybody. It affects blacks, white, all kinds of people. It has no regard for so social status. And so it means that everyone should be careful, relaxing uh, lockdowns and shutdowns early without really testing people is a dangerous mistake. Nigerian government intends to relax the lockdown next week. Are you bothered? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that brings me to my first, the, the point I just made earlier. The WHO yesterday had a, a, a briefing in, in Africa, WHO Africa. And the, after the briefing, they issue a statement. And the statement says the exact same thing. Yes, it's hard for people to be home when you don't give them food. Yes, it's hard to keep people locked down uh, without the basic amenities. But at the same time, you need to make sure that you know where the virus is. And the only way you can know where the virus is is when you test as many people as possible. And the Nigerian government has tested so far almost 11,000 plus out of a population of 200 million people. So it means they've not really tested. And, and, and they've not done enough testing for them to even know where the virus is, to understand the, 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 the crisis in the country. So relaxing lockdown, uh, lockdown measures without even testing people, to me, I believe that is not the right thing to do. And it's not just me. The WHO says the same thing, that you need to make sure that you expand testing, you expand uh, surveillance, you expand, um, you need to be able to expand uh, contact tracing before you can lift those measures. Simon Ateba, it's been a pleasure having you on News on the Hour. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.